Okay, today we're continuing with our GIF animation. We always have to set things up for success. So I want to uh, have my project open in PhotoP, have it so I can clearly see my layers and my layer folders that work for each frame. If I turn all those off, I can see my, my sketched storyboard and I'm trying to follow it but of course changes are going to have to be made. I also have easy access to my assets. You know any elements I might want to bring in. So I know I'm going to bring this guy in pretty soon. Right now I've gotten up to this guy. And we've created our folders already. I have a background in that's just gray. And so far I know I want this for my first frame. I know I want this for my second frame. It doesn't look as clean yet as I'll want it to look. And I know I want this for my third frame, but do you see how that's too big a jump from here to here? Everything works except for the red. So this is where it's helpful once you kind of build your frames to click through the eyeballs and to see what too big a jump is. I know I spent a lot of time in the last video adjusting the colors here. So they kind of work between the first and the second frame. So on this third frame, I'm going to edit it. And in order to do that, I need to rasterize that element I brought in. And then, of course, I just use what we've learned in compositing. I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm going to click on contiguous. There's zero feather here. I'm going to click on the different red parts. And then I want to replace the color. And what the easiest way to do that is to actually duplicate that red onto a new layer and then to play with a layer style. But you can do it your own way. You can do it with direct adjustments too, just using hue saturation. But this allows me to kind of turn it on and off. So I'm going to go to color overlay click on that and then choose a new color. And I think I want something in the purples because I'm going from a blue. So I'll just start there, say okay. And now I want to see, is that too big a jump? That's a little big. I need it maybe be a little bit pale or purple because it's a a layer style, I can just click on color overlay and then just adjust it a little bit. Maybe to there. So keeping it simple. Yeah, so now these first three frames make a little bit more sense. Whoops, skipped ahead. And I don't need to run an animation test in GIF Maker to see that. Okay, before I move on, I might start cleaning it up a little bit. So this one's not looking so great. You know, lots of rough edges, and it moves to something that looks a lot cleaner. So at any time, you can go back to your, your frames because we haven't outputted them for animation yet, and we can just clean it up a little. Using shape tools, I'm just gonna use the lasso directly. I'm gonna put it onto a new layer here, and I'm just going to use not the gradient tool, but what's called the paint bucket tool. It's underneath the gradient, right underneath the uh, eraser. And then this is a really helpful tool when you're using a paintbrush or a paint bucket. Hmm, why is it not reacting? <laughs> you can then just click in and get the color you want, but you're going to pick the color using the foreground selector box in the lower right corner there. Let's scoot that up maybe a little bit for you. And when that color picker comes up, you don't have to always pick it 
using the the millions of colors here. You can also just move off the color picker and actually select it by double clicking on your image. So it will steal that color exactly that I'm trying to match. And then I just click and fill it in. All right. Whoops. You don't want to click in the wrong place. And I can also just use a paintbrush. And I'm going to use the paintbrush at 100%, 100% hardness, 100% opacity. And I can also clean it up just by using a paintbrush. And I'm using a trackpad here. And it would be a lot easier with a, uh, a stylus and a tablet. If you have that, feel free to use it for cleaning up your work. But if you don't have it, I want to show you that it can be done without. Then you can also always cut away. Just want to make sure you're on the right layer. And clean it up that way. Now because this is GIF animating, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's only screen resolution. It's only meant to be shown for a fraction of a second. But we are going to do refined storyboards. So you do want it to be at least somewhat uh, clear. But it doesn't need to be gorgeous. I think I'll just paint and the reason I want a little bit of the outline around it in the blue is because the next layer has the full um, kind of outline around the creature. So I have actually a better idea because I just want to clean up the circle. This is why we talked about compositing first. You want to be creative about how you do your work. So I'm going to create a new layer with a circle. Actually, I can use the shape tools. Hold down shift and get a perfect circle. Use the move tool, move it into place. I just wanted to clean up my edges a little bit. I can hit Control T, hold down Shift to keep it a perfect circle, and stretch it behind and around, just like that. And then, because it's a shape tool, I can click on it, double click on it, and I can do a color overlay. And I can choose just from the image itself. All right, and so now that outside edge looks a lot cleaner than it did before. So your keyframes, it is a good idea to kind of clean them up as you go, as much as possible. Little things. From the overlaps I can delete or fill in. And you can clearly see the pixels because these are rasterized shapes at screen resolution. And I'm trying to be efficient and organized, but also fairly conscious of my time and speedy because I know there's a lot more to work on. So clean your work as you go, but don't get lost in it because we can always clean it up at the end as well. But the reason we want to clean it is because maybe we can use some of some of these layers as assets later. In future frames.
All right, and just one little other correction I want to make. Oh, and this is kind of a good thing to keep in mind in photo P here. If you're seeing the, the pixels outlined on the screen, like you see right now, that's as close that one level. This is zoomed in. What's the percentage there? 800%. <laughs> so this is pretty much more zoomed in than you ever need to be especially for screen resolution GIF animation. So even though you can keep zooming in and see every pixel, at some point, it's not going to be visible to your viewer. OK. So that looks a lot better than it did before. Just looks a little bit tighter. Actually, yeah, I didn't even remember all the histories for, for going back. Okay, so now I have step one, step two, step three. And here's where those clean assets can come in handy. I can take that circle shape, duplicate it, drag it down to f the frame folder for one. Remember we really looked at how to get things to nest in folders. There it is. Then I want to move it into the folder and then behind. So that now, trying to keep everything organized, turn off layer two. Now I can take that shape and I can simply, whoops, control T, not command T, and I can simply shrink it. Come on. Holding down shift and option to shrink towards the middle. Oh. Where's my transform box? I'm going to rasterize it just because it's being weird. And then control T. I'm not seeing my transform box. I guess I'll do it from each end like this and clean it up a little bit. So now I have that, that background circle shape that will help me as I go. Good. And I might actually take that same shape and make a duplicate of it and push it up to folder 3 for my next frame, which I'm looking at right now. So I'm going to turn off the others, and I move this one behind. And instead of it being blue, now I'm going to make it purple. And I can do that just by clicking on it. And so it does a little bit of rounding at the top there instead of it flattening out. OK, so I've got three frames done. So what's next? The eyes, the horns need to change color, and the expression needs to change, and I get to eventually get to this is my next kind of keyframe inspiration. So I'm going to bring this in. And then how do I place it? I'll take my opacity down. I know this process is different for each of you, but you notice how the uh, how the horns are different colors. I'm going to turn the sketch off. I'm going to let it get just a tiny bit bigger. Ah, Control-T, not Command-T. 